In this video, we're going to be talking about Hess's law. Ethine reacts with hydrogen to form ethane. Now, we're not too worried about balancing it here, but the main question is this. If I was to react ethine with hydrogen, would ethane be the only product I produce? Unfortunately, in this case, we would also produce some ethene. And this is inevitable in such a situation. That means the reaction where ethine only turns into ethane cannot be measured. So does that mean we can't get an enthalpy change for this reaction? Well, it can't be measured directly. However, we can still work out the enthalpy change from ethine to ethane indirectly using Hess's law. So Hess's law is there. If a reaction cannot be worked out directly, such as this example, we can work it out indirectly by using a common reactant or product that both the reactants and product in the top reaction share. So then if we now label this reaction as reaction one, our main reaction that we want to work out, and this one as two and this one as three, we can say, and this is the only time you can say, that one is equal to two plus three. So Hess's law states that the enthalpy change is the same regardless of route taken. So if you can't work it out directly, you can just work it out indirectly and it should be the same value. So before we look at Hess's law calculations, let's quickly remind ourselves of two important definitions. The first one is enthalpy change of combustion. And the definition is when one mole of a substance is completely burnt in oxygen under standard conditions. Now, standard conditions refer to temperature as being 25 degrees Celsius, pressure being one atmosphere, and any solutions having a concentration of one molar. Also, this is a symbol for standard enthalpy change of combustion. The circle with a dash through it means standard conditions, and the C refers to combustion. So here we have two examples of reactions that are undergoing enthalpy change of combustion. We can see in both examples, one mole of a substance is reacting with oxygen. In the top one, we have one mole of methane. In the bottom one, we have one mole of ethanol. And these are their combustion products. Okay, another important definition is enthalpy change of formation. This is when one mole of a compound is formed from its constituent elements under standard conditions. All reactants and products being in their standard states. So basically, the state that they will be at room temperature. And again, we have the symbol for standard enthalpy change of formation. Here we have two examples of enthalpy change of formation reactions. In the first one, we're forming one mole of ethanol. And, the, and in the second one, we're forming one mole of ammonia. And these are the constituent elements. Notice that they are all in their standard states at room temperature. Okay, back to Hess's law. Now we're going to talk about Hess cycles. The first one is called a formation cycle. So our main reaction is at the top, and this is what we want to work out. In the formation cycle, we put elements at the bottom and point up to reactants and up to products. Let's say the value of the left arrow is 300 and the right arrow is 450. Since we know the value of the two arrows, we can add them together to give us the top arrow. However, have you noticed that there's something wrong with the cycle? Here's a reminder. Hess's law says that you can go like this from reactants to products, or you can go like this and then up. Notice that one of our arrows is not pointing in accordance to Hess's law. This is normal. So what we have to do now is flip the sign on this value. So this becomes minus 300. Then we can add them together like normal. And that should give us a final answer of 150. So that was how to do a formation cycle. We'll do an example later. Let's move on to the combustion cycle. This time, we're going to point down from reactants and products to our combustion products. Again, let's say we want to work out the value of X and the value of the arrows have been given to us. So we said that we can add the two arrows and that should give us the value of X. However, we can see that according to Hess's law, this arrow is not going the right way. That means we're going to have to flip the sign. 
So that gives us 200 plus minus 800, and that should give us a final answer of minus 600. So these are the two types of cycles that you need to be aware of for Hess's law. So in formation cycles, we have elements at the bottom and we point up. In combustion cycles, we have combustion products at the bottom and we point down. Once you've made your cycle, then you want to see which arrow is going the wrong way. In formation, it's always going to be the one on the left, and in combustion cycles, it's going to be the one on the right. Once you've identified the arrow that's going the wrong way, all you have to do is flip the sign and then you can add them together. Now the next question is, which cycle do we use for a question? This depends on what the question says. If it says using formation data, then you use a formation cycle. Or if it says using combustion data, then we have to use a combustion cycle. So let's try this question together. We want to work out the value for the enthalpy change of this reaction given to us. And the question says you've been given formation enthalpies. So because we've been given formation enthalpies, we're going to make a formation cycle. This means we're going to put elements at the bottom. Now these elements are the ones that we have in the reaction above. So we have sulfur, oxygen and hydrogen. Make sure to balance the elements to reflect the reaction above. Okay, now let's start making our cycle. So we point upwards from elements to reactants and to products. Next, we need to get the values. So let's start from the left. Can some of these elements at the bottom form sulfur dioxide? Yes, they can because it's a compound. So the value for the formation of sulfur dioxide from its elements is minus 297. So we have one value already. Remember, it doesn't have to be all the elements. It could be any combination of the elements below. In this case, sulfur and oxygen form sulfur dioxide. Okay, moving on to the next one. Hydrogen sulfide. Can this be formed from the elements below? Yes, sulfur and hydrogen can form hydrogen sulfide. And they've given us the data for the formation of hydrogen sulfide. Since we have two of them, we're going to do 2 times minus 20.6. Finally, adding all of the reactions on the left gives us minus 338.2. Okay, so we have the value for the left side. Now let's move on to the right side. Can sulfur be formed from its elements? The answer is no. Why? Because sulfur is already an element. And you can see that we have sulfur already at the bottom. So there's no enthalpy change to make an element from an element. Also notice they haven't given us enthalpy of formation for sulfur. It makes sense. You can't make an element from its elements. What about water? Water can be formed from hydrogen and oxygen. And they've also given us the formation data for water. Since we have two of them, we're going to do 2 times minus 286. That gives us minus 572. Now, before adding minus 338.2 with minus 572, let's have a look. Hess's law says to go from here to here, we go from here to here, and then from here back to here. So, which of my arrows is not going in accordance to Hess's law? It's this one. That means I'm going to have to change the sign on the minus 338.2 to plus 338.2. Now, I'm ready to add them together. And that should give me a final answer of minus 233.8. And this is the value for the enthalpy change of the reaction above. Okay, so in this example, we've done a formation cycle. In the next video, we're going to do a combustion cycle. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com, where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.